This video is going to be a look at some of the new concepts that the Ravens are running in 2022. Now, I don't offer to you that these new concepts are enough to um, keep defenses off balance in terms of reducing predictability. In some cases, I think they are. So I'm going to, th I'm going to show you uh, three concepts. And then I think in a separate video, probably show you a, a backwards RPO that the Ravens are running that's, quote, new, at least for us. Um, and I think the beneficiary of these new plays in each case is, um, is running backs. Well, except for the first one, it's a shovel pass. So we know that Mark Andrews has called a touchdown pass off a shovel pass. J.K. Dobbins has called a touchdown pass this last week against Buffalo on a shovel pass. Um, I think I'll also show you one that Ricard caught, but I, but it wasn't a designed play for a shovel pass for him. It was like late in the progression. It's one of a number of plays where Rashad Bateman is open and we're not getting him the football. So as, as it may, let's get started with the film. This is going to be a look at new concepts that uh, the Ravens and Greg Roman are running. And then I will have a commentary on the second concept in terms of how we can reduce predictability. Week three. Against New England, a little shovel pass, but it's off the option look. So it's essentially a hide concept. Hopefully every time that I reboot this video, it's not you know stuttering for you guys. But you can see there's an option look on Matt Judon. So he could give it to the running back based upon the Judon read. And typically, you know, the running back's going to keep it, or the quarterback's going to keep it and run around the edge after faking to the running back. In this case, he doesn't give it to the back. Now Judon is playing this half-man technique, half of the running back on the give, half of the quarterback on the keep. But the problem for Judon is he's got Isaiah Likely running out into the flats. This is a great usage of Isaiah Likely and his ability to, you know, break tackles and kind of get extra yards. So cool concept. I'm a big fan of it. The cool thing is, is as well, we've used it twice down in the goal line, actually a third time, I think. And then here we're using it on like the negative 25. So it's not like our usage of this play, of this concept, is limited to a certain part of the field because there are coaches like that, not just Greg Roman. There's guys who call plays that only use certain concepts in certain parts of the field. And once you get past four, five, six games in a season and you've got enough data as a defensive coordinator, defensive staff, you can kind of really make some conclusions about what they are or maybe what they are not going to run in certain parts of the field. So the fact that we're using the shovel pass in multiple parts of the field – to multiple players is a good thing. And we got to get the ball to that guy more, right? Isaiah Likely. All right, against Buffalo this past week, shovel pass to uh, JK out of a slightly new variation of a formation twin slot. And the cool thing about getting it to JK or any running back for that matter is that it's a guy who can bounce off people and break tackles. It's a guy who can get more yards despite contact running into, you know, the pulling lineman, Ben Powers. And it's a nice job by the offensive line, if you ask me, of, of pa passing this guy off to Powers and then working up to the linebacker level. So one of the better plays, if you ask me, that uh, Morgan Moses put on film Buffalo, I don't think that was his best game, to be honest with you. Another little comment about it, to be honest with you, is this is twin slot. So it's 21 personnel, two running backs, Dobbins and Ricard, and then one tight end. We've got twins over here, and then slot, meaning Ricard is lined up, you know, one by one is typically a slot alignment or something like that, sometimes two by two, off of the left tackle. So your twin side is down the bottom, and then your slot side is up to the top. So far, the shovel pass, I think, has gone to the right three times and to the left once, and I'll show you that one here in a moment. The twin slot formation, I'd like to do a video on um, as the week gets long, gets going on, to be honest with you, because the Ravens run a backwards RPO at a twin slot that I'm a huge fan of. They have the ability to get the ball to other guys more. I think as we have seen us become more conservative, we've gone away from some of the more spread formations. But in any case, look, same formation as the last one, except I think we're going to motion out to empty. So there's your twin, and there's your slot up there, with Andrews taking... Uh, Ricard's place from the previous play, and now we're in 11 personnel because Ricard's off the field, and we got two receivers down here. Same concept, though. Lamar's going to take off to our left a little bit, drift out, and then shovel underneath to Andrews, and that little undersized linebacker, number 30, makes a great attempt at a tackle, but he can't make the tackle on Andrews. It's a third and one. By the way, if you can't see that down there at the bottom of the screen, it looks like you can't because the frame's cutting it off. 
And again, you've got the pulling lineman. This time, it's uh, Zeitler. Easy completion. You know, so some of these slightly, you know, slight variations of plays that we've done in the past, little creative stuff to make the game easier on Lamar. We need to do more of this. We need to have more of these concepts so that he's not expected to do everything, um, especially on days like in Buffalo this past week where he didn't play very well. All right, I'm going to switch over to my other playlist here. It's going to be uh, draw plays. And if you've ever considered supporting any content creators, not just me, but other people, uh, now's probably time to do it. I'm sure every other content creator for uh, NFL stuff will tell you it's it's every two or three days you get hit for um, Baldy's breakdowns telling you that you've used a play that they used and it's like a 10 second segment. So you got to go back and trim out your video. It'll piss you off. I'm sure you can hear the disappointment in my voice. Waking up every day, realizing work I did a week and a half ago. They're trying to steal $90 from me like the NFL needs another $90. So if you've ever considered supporting content creators, Sip to Tally, Edgar Allen, Huddle It Up Films, Engraven, uh, Cole Jackson, any of those guys through Patreon or myself, you know, please do as, do as much of that as possible, even if it's $2 a month, $5 a month for some of those people or me, uh, because we got to deal with that bullshit constantly. <clears throat> All right, draw plays. There's a lot of good to say about these and a lot of bad, to be honest with you. Number one, this has been a positive play for us, so I shouldn't complain too much. We're gaining yards on it. That's all that matters. I really don't care what the concept is, but there's a lot to say uh, in terms of predictability here. Um, and now, early in the season, the first two times I saw this draw play run, I thought, oh, I can predict this based on when the tight end, where the tight end is lined up. You know, whether he's attached to the right tackle or not. And now against Buffalo, we've kind of moved the tight end out further. That's Andrew's, you know, patented position right there for to be able to run the over route, you know, or sometimes, you know, the lube up the middle of the field or just sit this thing down in between the hashes. So that's coming. That has to be coming because we're under center right now. We're faking the little smoke screen or hitch screen out here to the X, even though Bateman's not showing hands or anything. And then we hit the draw play. So it's great. I love it. I'm, I'm not sure about you. I'm a huge fan of it. I'll tell you a couple things I don't like is that we're teaching Pat Ricard to stand up, pop straight up, stand straight up. As if there's any other play in our playbook when he does that. You know, what you want to do is you want to make run and pass plays look the same for as long as possible. Uh, there was a great segment on Twitter that somebody tagged me in. Marcus Spears made a great point that, that we covered on this channel and, and other people in the comments section a long time ago is that uh, he used the word elongation, meaning you want to make run and pass plays look the same for as long as possible. Look at Edmund's eyes. He's seeing Lamar fake the pass, and then he's just reacting to the ball, obviously. But if you wanted to key the running back, you would know now because Ricard's helmet popped up. Any other run play that we do, if we're doing option to the side, he's going over here. He's not going to pop up. If it's a kick play, he's going over here. If, you know, maybe we're running fullback hide off a of play action, he's going to go here immediately. There's no other play concept that we run where he does that. If there is, let me know. And in any case, it's a good block by him. It's a cool concept. Andrews is going and getting Tehran Johnson. Ricard is getting Edmonds. Falele has scooped up to Matt, to, uh, Matt Milano. We missed him on that uh, one time in this game, to be honest with you. I'm talking about Falele. It's a nice job, nice design, if you ask me. Linderbaum's going to work back on the one technique. Falele's going to go up and get Milano. So it's kind of like a reverse fold where Powers is now going to get the D-end. So it's a cool play concept. But, in, you know, as, as the season goes on, we got to run more out of this formation. I would call it program. And, again, my thought early in the season when I saw it the first time was, well, this is predictable. I still offer to you that it is somewhat. Watch Ricard at fullback, pop straight up. There is no other play concept we do where he just stands straight up. That's not a that's not a football move. We got to run something over here to the X. I don't care if it's a fade to Rashad Bateman. You may be down on Bateman because he dropped a lot of balls. He did. Bateman might not be a mutter. A mutter is a guy who plays well in the mud, plays well in the rain. Got news for you. We got other guys on our team that aren't mutters either. I think J.K. Dobbins is though. I think J.K. Dobbins is a mutter. He runs well uh, on on this field, if you ask me. You know, if we had past concepts where Ricard was, you know, popping up and and then looking to help on the D end or maybe helping the A gap, and Dobbins was popping up and maybe 
going to help on a D end. If we have past concepts, I would be like glowingly positive about this play. But if you're reading backs, and some people do at times, um, it's the dead giveaway on the fullback. In my opinion, if we're facing this formation, we're reading the fullback on this formation because he's he's telling us to play so far through week four. And this is to my point that I made last year, about a year ago, um, and this t- this time of the season is where you kind of become predictable and people start to sell out to stop certain things uh, based upon the formation. I think the Ravens are way better this year, though, if you ask me about uh, about not being as predictable. This is an example where, even though this is a positive play generally, I think we had a 16-yard gain, a 6-yard gain, a 10-yard gain, and I think Hill busted one for like 12. We also had a 1-yard gain. We ran the draw like four times, maybe five last week. I could be wrong. Same play against the Bills. This is the 16-yard gain that I showed you to start. So you get it. We've got two, at least two new concepts, right? We've got shovel pass. We've got draw. Uh, but those are those are to benefit like running backs. Those are to benefit, you know, maybe the tight end, likely, or Andrews. We need some new concepts to benefit the receivers. I think that's the part that's limiting so far. I think Rashad Bateman is frustrated by it. I do. And I can't blame him. All right, so another point about the draw. I kind of touched on this already. This is one of the same plays I showed you. So I'm going to show you a couple of different formations um, or variations of it. <clears throat> so this is a very similar formation, except now Lamar's in the pistol. So it's not draw. It's just not a draw play. We're in the pistol, all right? Uh, what I'm saying to you is when we have the fullback offset from one side or the other, I call it ram or lion. So in this case, we would call it lion. Other people call it different things. The point is, defensively, you're going to have a way to communicate to each other pre-snap. Oh, this is Ram Lion, but, you know, it's pistol, so it's not draw. And not like I say all that. They're going to have trigger words. They're going to have keywords. And this is a slightly new concept that we've been running to death this year. Counter windback. So Lamar is open in this way. Obviously, the back is going to that side, and there's a mesh. And then it's designed to wind it back. Really, it looks like just F counter. The left guard's pulling and kicking. Ricard is lined up on our left, and he's going to our right and blocking. So we've been running this a lot. It's been very good to us. This looks a little muddied because of the motion by DuVernay, but I'm a big fan of it. I'm a big fan of this because if we could run the motion by DuVernay and we could get Ricard out on the edge to lead block for DuVernay, that's a good that's a good play call. I like it. But in my opinion, some of these play calls where the fullback is offset, we got to get the ball to these guys. We got to get the ball to them. There's got to be some of this stuff. And I'm going to be honest with you, the over route that Andrews runs, I'm a huge fan of it. It's very productive for us. Rashad Bateman needs to be running more than just clear out routes. In another, in a separate video, I'll show you three instances of Rashad Bateman just running a clear out route with pretty much zero chance of getting the ball. Now you may say, well, coach, he's just got to win on that vertical. Well, the corner's off at eight, nine yards depth. Can we get him to dag on ball? When Des Bryant was signed to this team, we threw smoke screens to him, hit screens to him like six or seven times when we had him. We can't do that to Rashad Bateman, a guy who's shown us he can miss tackles. And I'm a little perturbed by by some of the narrative around Bateman. All right, now we're under center. And we've got the same thing with Ricard. But this is not the draw play. Notice Ricard. What's he not, what's he not doing? He's not popping straight up and standing vertically. He's going to block the DN on the opposite side. Now, I'm a big fan of us doing this under center. And we're we're available to throw the football to. Right here. This is available. There's there's closing defenders. Yeah, there's a guy on the inside leverage, but he's not he's not closing on that curl route. There's a corner who's getting ready to close on it, no doubt. Throw the football. We've got to run other concepts from here. Throw the football, period. Now, we end up turning it into a positive play because that's what Lamar can do. He's great at it. It's the running back out in the flats. So, I love the design. I love the pass pro using the fullback on the D end over here and then slipping the running back out in the flats as a late option for the quarterback in case nobody's open or in case we just don't throw the ball for whatever reason. And that happens. Look, it happens to other quarterbacks too. But just get get the ball out to the guy. Let the receivers make plays. This is an example of a play being called and a receiver being available, and we're just not throwing the football to him. 
and it's not a muddy day. It's not raining. So there's some times where it's on the coaches, and there's some times where it's on Lamar. Another play that we have been running under center with Ricard in that offset alignment. Now, you can see he's a little wider now. He's outside the tackle. There's probably a reason why, right? It's because we're running stretch over there. It's not a productive play. I'm just, this is just to show you new concepts that we're running. <clears throat> Ricard's alignment being a little wider, I'll prove to you here in a moment, and I'll tell you the reason why, I'll tell you the reason why we're motioning. Look at his alignment, right? On the previous plays, his feet was in here, right? And I'll go back to those. And if you if you don't believe me, I can go back in a moment and show you. But that's the reason why we're doing this motion. This motion is to draw attention to the motion and not have attention on Ricard. That's why there's motion on this play. To hide the fact that Ricard is lined up wider, which if we didn't motion could possibly give away the play design, which is a stretch play to our right, That's which is designed to go outside. So hopefully that makes sense. There's always different things you can pick out if you're a defensive person and that's all you watch. That's why football staffs are um, separated, right, into offense and defense so that you don't have your defensive coordinator trying to coach fullbacks or tight ends and spending time on something that he shouldn't spend time on. So under center, yeah, we do run some other stuff. I just showed you two examples, you know, of us trying to run a curl backside to Demarcus Robinson, I think, and now us trying to run stretch. To out of this ram alignment with the fullback offset. Again, notice that what Ricard's not doing. He's not popping up. So like that read on that draw, I mean, yeah, he's got to do something to stay in position to um, to block in the draw play, but, you know, that's just a dead giveaway. All right, last new concept. And again, if you've ever considered supporting Ravens content creators, not just me, you know, please consider doing even like two dollars a month, five dollars a month for those people is a big deal. Because if we aggregate, you know, a hundred of those people, that's a big help. You know, and then it, and then it justifies that time that we've got to go back and spend um, <clears throat> editing videos a second time after the NFL tries to claim your income. Screenplays, man. In our Discord on this one, uh, <laughs> people said, "Did we just run a screen like with all caps?" I mean, it was. It was fun. It's fun to be in the Discord and and get to chat with like 60, 65 people during the game in a controlled environment versus Twitter. That's you know kind of crazy. I like to try to tweet during the game, but it's difficult to do sometimes. Screen man, getting the ball to Justice Hill or J.K. You know, or even Gus. You know, awesome stuff. So big fan of the design. Now to be a little bit of a Debbie Downer, which I've been you know a couple times in this video. So my apologies. It's early on a Thursday morning, and you're probably looking for positivity. Hopefully, you're getting some. Uh, but some reality, too. It's one back. So Ricard is not in the backfield. It's not run. We're normally running with two backs in the backfield. That's normally one of the threats, one of the things we can do. And normally under in one back is pass. Think of the first play of the season to Rashad Bateman. A play action, boot to the top side. It was one back. Ace. Well, what would we, we would call ace. But our linemen can execute this, especially Linderbaum, Makari, even Zeitler. Zeitler's not, you know, slow. They're, they're slow compared to position players, but compared to other offensive linemen, you know, they can get the job done. All right, then last screen. Um, hopefully this has been like a, a little look at some new concepts, new plays. You probably already had awareness of them. I'm just trying to draw attention to them and and point out that this is these are positive developments. We're getting the ball to to different people than just Mark Andrews or Marquise Brown like last year where you know those two ended up with so many targets. The problem is these new plays, again, they're not getting the ball to the receivers uh, in new manners. We're not. It doesn't appear as if we're utilizing Rashad Bateman and Devin DuVernay enough, if you ask me. You guys can let me know what you think of that statement. I um you know I would love to see Bateman get the ball get targeted five, six times a game, somewhere around there. Maybe eight. There wouldn't be anything wrong with that. Some of these <clears throat> new plays at times look a little un look a little muddy, <laughs> to use that phrase for a third time. But I think the Dolphins are the the Bills are a smart defense. Their guys recognize things and they react quickly. You know, to expect uh, us to go out there and blow them out of the water like we did in the first quarter and a half, I think, is unrealistic. Even though. You know, we did so. We should, There is film of us doing so, and we had an opportunity to go up 
So you guys let me know what you think of the new concepts I'm showing you. Uh, shovel pass, draw concept, screens. I have another video coming out uh, this morning at some point on the backwards RPO that we're running out of a formation called Twin Slot. I would be a big fan against the Bengals of us utilizing all of them, but hopefully in a, a, an unpredictable way, maybe unpredictable down in distances, because as we've gotten leads this year, we have become more conservative in our calling and more, more predictable in terms of down and distance. I think the Bills use that against us. The Dolphins use that against us. Um, in some of those first and 10 situations in, against the Bills, really disappointing that we're just consistently running the ball, straight flow, run plays, not a draw, not a screen, you know, not anything that was, quote, new or unpredictable. Uh, we can't be using the same plays in week eight that we used in week two and three from the same formations. There's got to be variations. And I got news for you. The Cincinnati Bengals defense is one of those that if you show tendencies on film for four games, they're going to bet on those tendencies and they're going to stop whatever your you know, predictable play is out of each formation. They're very prepared, very prepared defense, full of smart guys and smart coaches. So I expect it to be a difficult game, one where we might need some of these new plays to be used in unpredictable situations. Let me know what you think of this video. Me just trying to point out some of the new concepts the Ravens are using in 2022.